Today, I want to share a story of how I have instantly cured my social anxiety. Michael McLean, BrassBallsVideos.com. I am an ex-professional hockey coach, ex-championship amateur hockey coach turned eight-figure entrepreneur. You can download a copy of my brand new book below. There's a link below. Uh, five ways to unfuck your life in the next 30 days. It's a free digital download. When you put in your email, I'll send you a free copy of the book within five minutes. My free gift to you. So a confession, I have suffered from what the experts now in the mental health industry calls social anxiety. Basically, that's a, a word salad for, um, for basically I'm an introvert. And you may be an extrovert, you may be an introvert. Most entrepreneurs and small business owners are introverts. Uh, that's just the reality of it. Being an introvert means that um, you actually uh, are able to um, be by yourself. You're, you're completely fine being alone. And most importantly, uh, an introvert recharges um, when they're by themselves in solitude. They're completely okay being alone. That's how an introvert recharges. Whenever I'm in a social setting, the next day I recharge by reading or walking or journaling. I recharge by being alone or being just around my immediate family. Most entrepreneurs are introverts. Uh, there are lots of extroverts. You may be an extrovert. My wife, Krista, is an extrovert. That means that uh, you recharge you get your energy from being around other people. The more, the more, the merrier. So all my adult life, I've been more comfortable speaking in front of 2000 people or running a mastermind with 25 entrepreneurs or speaking to a locker room full of players or parents. Um, I've always been more comfortable in front of large audiences. I've spoken at universities, colleges, rotary clubs, uh, seminars, you name it. And I've always been more comfortable in front of larger crowds than what I call one-on-one -on -one kind of cocktail parties. So uh, the latest thing I wanted to share this story is how I've recently literally conquered conquered this this social anxiety that I've suffered for about 30 years and it's just been recently that I've been able to uh, completely turn this around and I have to give credit where credit is due it was uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson another fellow Canadian who told me about this a few months ago I remember um, I got an invitation about two months ago to a, uh, a social function. It was a 50th birthday coming up um, this summer. And I'll never forget getting the invitation. We were in Naples at the time. And as soon as I got the invitation, I read it. It was, it was by email. And literally, it was just like something in the pit of my stomach. It was like, ugh, you know, and, and it should be something that you're like excited about. But immediately my response was tension, was anxiety, was some stress. And then, of course, it passed in a few seconds. But it was, it's, it was from time to time, it was always on my mind over the last two months. And the same thing, I had another, I've, you know, there's, we, we're always going to have to go to barbecues and cook, cookouts and social functions at the church and sports and all of these things. So I just finally decided several weeks ago that I was done letting social anxiety rule my life or make me dread 
upcoming events, I decided that I was going to be in control of my emotions and my feelings. I wasn't going to let any of this stuff negatively affect me. In other words, um, I was going to take complete control of the situation. I wasn't going to allow this anxiety into my life. So I want to tell you what I did yesterday. So yesterday was the party. It was a 50th um, birthday party for some really important people in our life. And, you know, it should be a, an exciting time. It should be something that you look forward to. But being an introvert, there's always that, that anxiety that, oh, I'm going to be around people in a situation where you're going to have to talk one-on-one -on -one to a lot of a lot of normies and all, whatever. It doesn't make any difference. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So instead of it being something that you dread or you, you know, you, you don't, you do not look forward to, I wanted to turn this completely around. So it was, uh, it was Peterson that gave me the advice and he said, listen, he said, for, for you to feel any form of anxiety, first of all, you need to be thinking about the future. In other words, you don't have your feet where they should be. You don't have your feet in today. When I first got that invitation to the party, I was like, okay, well, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to have to do this. But then again, it wasn't for two months until then. So the, uh, it was, it was like, I was worried about something that was going to happen two months from now. Same thing. So my feet weren't where they were. And as soon as I, as soon as I was where my feet were, everything changed. So that was number one. When you're, when you're suffering from, when a person's suffering from depression, they're living in the past. When they're suffering from anxiety, they're living in the future. When a person has peace of mind, they have both feet in today. They're in the precious present. They're in this moment. So that was his number one recommendation is number one, you got to live in the moment. So this is coming up uh, until then. There's nothing to do other than control the controllable. The other thing um, that Jordan said was to feel anxiety. Uh, he said about a situation like this, he said, you have to focus on yourself. Me, 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 me. I'm going to be uncomfortable. I'm going to meet people I haven't seen in a while. I'm going to be in a situation where people are, you know, drinking and me, 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 all about me. I'm going to be stressed. I'm going to be anxious. I'm going to be whatever it is. Me, me, me. It has to be focused. I have to be, it has to be, a, I have to be coming, coming from a place of selfishness. So he said, if you completely turn that around and you say to yourself, when I go to this social function, I'm going to be curious, not judgmental. That's a, that's a saying my father has. Be curious, not judgmental. And when you're meeting new people, there's something to learn from everybody. So when he said that, it changed everything for me. And over the last two, day, two weeks heading up to this, instead of being worried about it being on the calendar and oh, I got to go to this party and, you know, how can I get out of there and how long do I have to stay? I said, absolutely not. I'm going to be, I'm going to control the controllable. I'm going to have my feet. I'm not going to rob myself of these great experiences with friends and family. And I said, you know, I'm going to be mentally present. I'm going to control what I can control. And I'm going to be interested in other people. Like my dad always says, you can learn from every single person that you meet. There are no strangers. That's my dad saying, there's no strangers in this world. Eight billion people. There's no strangers. So uh, Peterson said, instead of going there and worrying about me, 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 and what you're going to do, focus on, uh, on, on, on making other people feel important. Focus on being curious about what other people are up to. Focus on somebody but yourself. And he said, all the tension, all the anxiety, and all the worry will go away. 
So I've been thinking about this for two weeks and I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up. I'm going to do my walk that morning. I'm going to do my reading. I'm going to do my writing. I'm going to control all the things that I control that make me at my very best. And then when I go to this function in the afternoon, it was on a Saturday afternoon, I said, I'm going to be completely, I, I'm going to be the guy who's constantly asking questions of these people. I'm genuinely and authentically curious. I'm like, like my, my father has always said, he said, you know, he said successful people introduce themselves, successful people introduce themselves and successful people ask questions of other people. In other words, they're curious, not judgmental. Any Anybody can tear somebody down. Oh, did you see that guy or did you see that gal? And what are they up to? Instead, my dad has always been, what can you learn from that person? Even if it's something of not what of what not to do. You can learn. You can learn what to do from a, from a person. And you can, in some cases, learn what not to do. But be curious, not judgmental. So yesterday for me was all about listening to understand and listening to hear. As, as, as strange as that sounds, our listening skills in 2024 are fucking garbage. They're absolute trash. Like everybody is me, 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 talk, 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 yell, 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 listening to, listening to respond, not listening to one single thing that somebody's saying in social settings, online, offline, me, 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 me. So yesterday, to, to cure my social anxiety, I said, no way. I'm gonna go to that party and I'm gonna learn things. I'm gonna be like a detective. I'm gonna ask people about themselves. I'm gonna be genuinely interested about these people. These are family, these are family members. These are relatives. These are people I went to school with. So there's lots of curiosity there. But instead of being anxious and sitting at the back and, and just, you know, may, you know, not, I said, no, 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 I'm going to talk to people and I'm going to talk to them about their favorite topic. And what's their favorite topic? Every human being's favorite topic is them, themselves, right? Me, me, me. So how did it work? Well, I'm happy to report that it was the absolute perfect prescription. I took care of myself that day. I don't drink alcohol anymore. So I'm, you know, I'm really present at the social functions. I'm not in a situation like years ago or two years or three years ago where I'd be, you know, drinking during the event. I'm, I'm, I'm completely mentally there. And I talked to dozens of people and I, I asked all kinds of questions and I learned all kinds of interesting things. And here's the thing. My ears were open the whole time. My ears were open the whole time. I was listening to hear. I was disciplining myself to listen to understand. I didn't ask questions like in the old days where I was just listening so I could reply quickly back to them. Um, I was the opposite. I was like, I had was tr genuine curiosity and all of my stress all of my anxiety disappeared. It disappeared before the event yesterday. It disappeared during the event. And when we got back in the truck after, I said to my daughter, Emery, and my wife, Chris, I said, that's one of the most enjoyable functions I've been at in years. My mom and dad were there. They're turning 91. Um, we had just a wonderful time. But I said, you know, I genuinely enjoyed that. For the, for the three hours that we were there. I was mentally present. Uh, I enjoyed talking to people. I enjoyed asking questions. I enjoyed, you know, catching up with people I hadn't seen in 10 years. And I, I said, I really enjoyed being curious and not judgmental. And I, I loved asking questions. And people loved, loved the fact that I was asking questions. And from the second I was there, I was, you know, I was reintroducing myself, shaking hands, being a, being a leader, being a, you know, that, and that's, a, that's the biggest thing. And I had some incredible conversations with some amazing people that I, I admittedly, I would not have had several months ago. I would not have had a year ago. 
I would have been too stressed, too worried, and I would have been checking my watch to see when the hell I can get out of this social setting. So you don't have to love it. Like I don't love it. I'm not a, I've never been a cocktail party guy and I am an introvert. I'm not trying to be something I'm not. But in this world, we have social interactions that we have to be a part of, especially with my wife being an, a, an extrovert. And I don't want to be like, you know, dreading them. I want to be where I get to the point like yesterday where I'm like, you know what? I know how to handle this. I know how to manage this. I'm in complete control of my mental state. My mental toughness, my, my, I, I know I, I'm in control of this situation. And it was a powerful, powerful experience because now I understand that I'm in complete control. There's no more social anxiety for me. I love talking in front of the big crowds. I love running masterminds. I love attending seminars. But just that, you know, that introverted part, uh, it's just not my cup of whiskey. So I hope you find something in there. Uh, if you're an introvert, if, if social things, um, you know, bother you or they're just not your cup of Earl Grey, then, um, you know, there's something. Peterson said it best. He said, instead of focusing on yourself, anxiety and depression is because, you know, it's, it's a selfish person's disease. You have to be consumed by yourself. You have to be consumed by yourself to suffer from depression and anxiety. It's just me, me, me. So his recommendation was bang on. And he said, do the exact opposite and focus on other people and be genuinely curious and ask people questions and listen, listen to understand and you'll be fascinated at what happens. So that's it. I hope you can find some value in that today. Happy Canada Day to my uh, fellow Canadian brothers. It's Canada Day here on Monday. Uh, we're so blessed, my wife and my daughter, to be able to spend our time in the two greatest countries in the world, the United States of America and Naples, Florida. We live there half the year and we live half the year here in the Great White North. So uh, happy Canada Day to all my uh, Canadian brothers and sisters um, and God bless Canada. So listen, on an unrelated note, I'm starting, uh, if you're not, if you're not satisfied with the first six months of your year this year, maybe you've plateaued, maybe you're in a bit of a rut, maybe you feel like you're in a bit of a funk, uh, or like, I, like in hockey, we used to say we get into a bit of a slump. Uh, if any of those things have happened and you're not completely satisfied with the first six months of your year, I've got good news. I'm starting up a brand new mastermind in August. Uh, it's my badass brotherhood mastermind. It's for 25 elite men. Uh, we're going to have three live events a year. I'm going to have month. I'm going to have bi-weekly trainings. Uh, it's going to be total soup to nuts. Newsletter, email, millions, all of it put together under one umbrella. And I'm not going to be charging fifty thousand dollars for the year, or thirty thousand dollars for the year. Uh, it's going to be nine ninety seven a year, nine hundred and ninety seven dollars a year. And if you have any interest in in being notified about it in the next week or two, just email Mark below. Or actually, I'll get you to do something different. Below, put uh, put badass in the comment. So if you're interested in being added to the notification list, put uh, badass in the comment below, and Mark Andre will uh, will send you some details in 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 the next few few days after. And you can make a decision, a hell yes or a hell no. Either way is perfectly okay. I won't even know. But I'm looking for 25 men that are ready to take everything to the next level. I'm looking for 25 men that are tired of playing small. They're tired of playing not to, to uh, tired of playing not to lose and want to take everything. They want to scale their entire life to the next level. If that sounds like you, it's a monthly program, 997. Uh, comment below, um, uh, badass below, and I'll get you some details in the next few days. And that's it for today. Two words that changed my life, two words that'll change yours. Be relentless.